Hello and welcome back to the Motivating Force, everybody. Joining me as always, we have Host Sway, an aspiring Marine Corps officer who's currently finishing up ROTC and his bachelor's in the criminal justice field, and myself, Justin, a motivational speaker who's always more than excited to share all of our wonderful ideas and topics with you guys. With this being just week two of me having a newborn in the house, I have yet again not been able to prepare the normal Monday content for everybody. So this episode is not going to necessarily be a hashtag Monday motivation, but we are going to talk about some interesting points, some things that I had happen this week that I think um, would be very beneficial for you guys to learn from. Uh, Definitely some situations that made me think this week, and let's just jump right into it. I mean, I think it's a good idea, too, that, you know, we're giving some diversity to a Monday because usually it's just the Wednesdays that kind of go off the rails sometimes. But this way you're able to give some like, you know, other examples of what you do in your life. that's different than just giving motivation on a Monday. I mean, I see this as borderline um, just talking crap. That's for this week. But that is perfectly fine. (laughs) Yeah. The very first thing I want to talk about this Monday is simply stop being so high strung okay i just want to get out there and say that i mean that that's motivation for some people (laughs) but this has been my uh first week back at work right i've been lucky enough to be able to take a week off spend some time with my wife and the newborn and just get everybody acclimated back at home and and um play the housemaid make sure everybody's taken care of and good and all that but jumping back into work after really like it was like 10 days i think in total right yeah man can that be a shock sometimes you never really realize your day-to-day routines until you take just even 10 days apart from it and then you get back into work and you think you're like yeah i'm gonna have this renewed energy this is gonna be great like i have this fresh mentality getting into it and then you get back there, and then the first day hits you like a ton of bricks. Well, that's, and like, to, for your job specifically, you kind of changed your perspective of how hard the job actually is. I'm not saying, like, it's the hardest job in the world, but it is tough on a person. But you've become so, like, routine to it. You've been so used to feeling, like, you know, crap every day that you kind of, you got numb to how hard the actual job is. So having to confront people all the time and like work out in the sun and work with cars, I can imagine that it's like a shock to the system, especially having, like you said, 10 days off. Yeah, it definitely went that way. I was thinking about it um, way too optimistically. Yeah. But I think the biggest example, and I do almost want to say that like this doesn't happen all the time, right? Yeah. I very rarely get people that I talk to and explain things going on with their car and i get like criers okay okay i mean once a month you get somebody who will get like emotional right and then usually gets mad but it's just like no big deal no i mean i get people who are mad like every day okay but uh, (laughs) that's more normal (laughs) that's more normal yeah i'm used to people yelling but getting people who are sad or or crying or emotional in that sense is like it's it's not that common you know and this week alone my first week back of course it's happened like four times this week and i'm like what is going on did i like i'm thinking it's me like maybe i'm saying things differently now since i had 10 days off and i'm all optimistic about this and i'm coming in there just like i got great news for you (laughs) you need to go buy a new car you know and um, i guess people don't take it that well and now you're like damn these people cry more than my baby yeah you know all right so tell tell me what happened with uh with somebody that came and started crying on you this is where we're getting the first level of motivation here and telling people to not be so high strung because this was a, a customer who was generously passed on to me because other people may or may not have felt the desire to uh, continue handling that situation, right? Oh, okay. So, so they, they started the engagement and then passed it on. Right. Or they knew it was going to come out to this outcome and then they just passed it on. No, I'm not what was sure to come. what okay. was to come. Like if, if there was expectations that were met here or not. But um, as you can tell with the professional lingo here, I'm keeping this as kosher as possible. Yeah. You know, starting off with a high strong, it's like, okay, if your car's in the shop, you're having a big 
a, a bigger issue than normal. You know, you don't got a flat tire. You don't need an oil change. There's something going on with your car. Yeah. It's going to take time to figure out. Now, get this. It's especially going to take time to figure out if the car has been at another shop for a week and nobody had an answer. Hmm. Interesting. And then now it comes to me yeah. and I should be able to give you an answer in 24 hours. Yeah. It doesn't work like that, right? So we're going through, we're checking this car out, we're, we're doing everything we can. And I mean, long story short, car needs an engine, but we had to cover all of our bases and, and just make sure because sometimes little little dumb things can happen, yeah. you know? Um, and as simple as a wire that's half plugged in could give you the same results as you thinking that it needs a motor. So you're talking a $5 repair versus like the $5,000 repair. Yeah. So we, you know, and it, and it is our job to be careful with that and make sure we're making the right call on these things. Okay, so to begin, what you're saying is the buck was passed from another shop. It wasn't that somebody in your shop knew what was going to happen and they're like, here, deal with the person. It was another it was shop. Both. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. I was saying, so, so the other shop was like, hey, we don't want to deal with this. So you guys figure it out. Yeah. Right? And then you guys went through all the little checks to see what's happening. Yeah. And then they were like, hey, Justin, you got to call this person. Right. <laughs> so I call this person. I'm talking to them. And, you know, I guess with that motivational, that high hope of like, you know, good news. You get to finally go buy a new car because yeah. you have a an old Chrysler. Like, come on, man. It's, it's time. It's time. Right. And they just start bawling on the phone. Right. I mean, like. Like, the type of cry that's, like, your grandmother just died yeah. type of crying. Like, repeating the same thing over and over again as you're crying yeah. type of cry, right? Like, that type of cry. Yeah. It's intense. With it being my first week back, everything hitting me like a ton of bricks, I was kind of just, like, sitting there on the phone just, okay, well, I guess I have to wait for you to stop crying before I can keep talking because this is kind of loud. Yeah, it's so the type of cry that so you can't just, really say anything to because they're not even listening to it. Yeah, and it just kind of goes right over the top of my head. Like, I'm just, yeah. did not really affect me too much, thankfully. So I, I finished that whole situation, right? And then I'm going through, I'm, I'm talking to my dad, I'm talking to the tech that was looking at the car, and, like, I was just making sure, since I'm the one to talk to her, like, hey, did we check these things out? Is this, all these bases are covered, right? Like, just to make sure on, on my end, because now she has my name, she's going to call back to me if something yeah. happens, right? And, um... Everything was good. Everything checked out the way it should. It is what it is. If you don't take care of your car, it's going to blow up, bottom line. Correct. Right? That's how things work in this life. <laughs> it is, and some people don't think that way. Yeah. So, Well, that's one of the issues, too, when, one, people don't value the means of their own transportation with the value that it should have. You know, like being somebody who, you know, I was lucky enough that my parents bought my first car, I wasn't really on top of it as I am now, but I still, you know, you having you as a best friend, like I would know, okay, I need an oil change regularly. I need to clean it regularly. But then there's other people that they buy a cheap car because that's something that they can afford and they don't take care of that is when it then bites them in the butt when things like this happen, when now the cost of the repair is double the price of the car's value. Right. So it's like if you're not going to take care of a car, you should know ahead of time that you should probably have some kind of like cushion in the background for when the car gives up. You're going to need to buy another one because you know you're not taking care of it. And instead, it's the quite the opposite where it's, you know, they didn't have money. The, the $30 for the oil changed in the first place. So now how are they going to have money to replace the engine or buy a whole new car and it's this whole mess that's really not any of my problem at all, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. When so. it comes down to the individual, if you know you're going to buy a car and you're not going to have the money to upkeep it, then you're not ready to buy a car. Right. You have to know all the things that it entails before you actually jump into that situation. Yeah. I mean, cars are a huge responsibility. It's yeah. it's the, should be, the second most expensive purchase you make in your entire life. Right? Your home is your most expensive purchase. Yeah. And your Believe second me. should be your car believe me it is <laughs> yeah brand new jeep ouch there goes my left arm yeah worth it though right nah, dude yeah. it's worth it i wouldn't change it for a while <laughs> <laughs> i bring all that story to tell you 
you're going through dealing with all these issues in life and some of them are going to have some severe outcomes. Some of them will seem simple and have big outcomes. And the bottom of the line is sometimes you just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going on. And if you're not prepared for the majority of situations that could happen in your life, it's going to hurt you tremendously. You need to be able to do whatever you can to prevent that from happening. You should be prepared to handle best case scenarios and you should be prepared to handle almost every worst case scenario possible in your life. Yeah. Because if not, then you're not ready. And if you're not ready, then you're not going to be at peace in your mind. Yeah. And it's also that you have to be proactive when it comes to these things. You should be taking care of whatever the object or situation you find yourself in before the worst case scenario happens or to put off the worst case scenario for as long as possible. You're being proactive in that endeavor of stopping that from happening right now. And then on top of that, being resilient, uh, foreshadow for Wednesday's episode, but being resilient enough and having that character trait so then you can snap back from whatever happens. Like instead of crying about it, being able to pick yourself up, realize that this is going to happen if you don't take care of your car and know what you got to do. See, that's where the motivational side comes in. Be prepared for all these things so that way it doesn't hit you like a train, yeah. you know. And on the personal side of things, if you're not prepared all the time like that, stop being so damn high strong. Yeah. Because you're making the situation worse for everybody. Like we're saying, it's been over a week of other people looking at your car. We're looking at your car and you think it's okay to call every 30 minutes asking for an update. It's not. It's not helpful. It's stressful for everybody involved in that situation. Yeah. Crying worse than my newborn child over the phone to me about your lack of maintenance ultimately blowing up your car also is not going to do anybody good and yeah. is going to cause a lot of stress for of everybody course. involved. So avoid, just avoid that. On the personal level, that's what I got to tell you guys, that high strong mentality or being so high strong all the time, showing these raw emotions, it's not okay. Yeah. It's not good for you. And it's, it's not good for the people around you. There is a time and place to show your emotions and to have that raw energy. But as soon as it hits these extreme sides of things, I'm telling you right now, it's just going to piss everybody off and it's going to make you feel like crap. Yeah. I mean, period. well, one, it's... Like you said, there's a time and place for it. When you're talking to a different, like when you're talking to a small business or just a business in general, you have to be as professional as possible with them, right? Like you're giving them something to do. They have to give you a return. If it's something that you don't like, you have to be professional about it. And then whenever you get off the phone or you leave the shop, then, I mean, you can show your emotions then. But in reality, is crying going to make the shop go, you know what? we'll buy you a new motor like is crying gonna do any of this stuff for you and i mean wednesday's episode we're gonna talk about why people are like that you know yeah. how soft people are sometimes and i'm not saying that as like uh like i'm not being a bully towards you guys but there are people that are emotional when it comes to these things and like i said time and place and then another thing about being proactive and all these like taking care of your car and the maintenance and all that I know that there's people out there that honestly don't have the time. Uh, and I'm going to use my parents as an example. Like my mom and my stepdad never, never take their cars to the shop unless like there's a major issue happening or like she can't get the reverse camera to turn on whenever she gets in reverse or, you know, something major happens where it's affecting her driving. And I will then take their truck, take the work truck, take their uh, like the Explorer, the car that they use just to get to work. And I'll take them to the shop because I know they need a routine oil change. And I'll do it because I know that they're running the truck to the ground. It's like, I know that's the only truck that they have for work. So come on, I got to keep it alive for you since you're not doing it yourself. You know, say you don't have time is like, you're sparing that 45 minutes versus Thousands not having the vehicle yeah. at all yeah. for what costs more time. Exactly. Right. So you have to consider all those things. And again, like you're saying, I'm not being a bully about it. I'm not trying to harass or talk down about this person, but 
it's just the way that you, you go about handling things and the way that, you know, I come on this show and, and think about my audience and how I want you guys to be able to live the best life possible. And that's not it. Yeah. You, you sometimes need to be told straight up, like, this yeah. is what you got to stop doing on, on like a better example of that, because again, apparently, I don't know, it's, it's the week of tears, I guess. I, I don't know. The second person, right? So, okay, look. They sent us the wrong part. We're waiting to get the right one in. As soon as we do, we're going to have it back together. Car was already torn apart. We're halfway there. Not a big deal, right? So, like, okay, well, I got to be at work at 2.30, whatever time it was. You know, it's like, okay, well, that's definitely not enough time. Like, they're not going to make it here with the part. We're not going to get installed in time for you to drive your car to work. And then she starts crying. And she's over there on her phone. And it's like, hey, what's up? You okay? Like, you know. She's like, yeah, I just got to figure out how to get to work. You okay. tell her that there's a thing called Uber and Lyft? Well, no, okay. but yes. right? She's like, oh, I'm just trying to figure out how to get to work. And it's like, okay, well, if you want some water or something, because, you know, we have the, the coolers there at the shop. If you want some water or something, feel free, help yourself, you know, whatever yeah. whatever you need, right? But it's like, she was, like, crying the whole time. Because I know some people out there are going to be like, oh, but I'm just emotional like that. I'm going to cry and all that. Well, there's a perfect example of how somebody goes about doing that, Right. It's not, they don't make a buying problem that, that that's happening. And they're working towards their solution. Every They're doing everything right. Everything's coming together. It's just on top of all that, eh, they're crying a little bit. Yeah. And that's what it is to be emotional. It's not a big deal, but they're able to continue on with their lives, do the things they need to do to live their normal life. Whereas in the first case, the first scenario there, it's, it's, it's like life shattering. It's going to change everything. And it's like, that is just not healthy. It's not good for people. So that's what I wanted to come on and just share today with everybody. No, I mean, like I said at the beginning, it's good. And I mean, you're still able to twist it to have that motivation behind it. And like I was mentioning before that, you're able to give those like life experiences that you have to deal with that are real. And, you know, it's a different perspective. I think with my whole idea behind it, too, is that, like, I've been the person more so to just, like, go with the flow with things, and even to the point where it gets me in trouble sometimes. Sometimes things do happen, right? Say the food takes too long to make at a restaurant, and then, you know, people at the table are getting impatient or whatnot, and I'm just like, eh, whatever. Look how busy they are. They're having a bad night. Whatever, right? I'm okay with it. Go with the flow. But then when the food comes out, and the food's cold, well, then, okay, a different story, right? Then I'm going to have to be like, okay, come on. We, we got to do something here about this, yeah. right? The the little minor inconveniences, and the they just require that little bit of patience yeah. and just going with the flow. And that's okay. And there is a point where you need to be able to do that and handle that well. And then there comes the point where it's no longer a minor inconvenience or it's a bigger issue. Like, it's not a minor inconvenience if the food comes out cold, right? Because there's nothing I can do about that. I can't now make this meal delicious. But on top of it being cold, you had to wait an hour. So now I have to, I've got to address that and, and go forward with that. But you see with me, it's like, that's something I honestly had. I have been working on is my patience. And I've talked about that before, especially when it comes to like a line, when it's supposed to be like a constantly moving line and it's not moving. That's like, what's? holding this up right now um but that's you know my issue that i have to deal with but i can fully relate with having to wait too long with food because i have an issue where i get hangry and if i'm very hungry i haven't eaten all day it's taking forever to get food and then on top of that it's cold i'm walking out dude yeah. honestly <laughs> i'm walking out after i dress it and they say okay you don't have to pay that i'm like peace right i'm out I'll give it another chance. Like, it's not like I'm never going to go to that establishment ever again. But it's like, dude, I, I got to get food in my system right now. So just all these little things, it's like, I'll take the stress off of your hands by not having to deal with me. See, even with that, like, I, I, I just weigh out those pros and cons at that point. I'm like, man, I've already been here an hour. So what's it going to take for me to go to another restaurant and wait yeah. or go home and cook food now or like this whole thing? Like, this was the plan, yeah. right? So what can I do to stay on the plan? It's like, great, the food, the food's free. Great. Hey, do you mind nuking this for a minute then? Because it can be subpar now that it's free. Because yeah. free adds flavor, yeah. right? So, 
you have that aspect to it. Makes it it the best meal you've ever had. So, you know, there are ways you can work with that and turn those bad situations into better situations for yourself. And um, a lot of that just takes being personable, having that good personality, making that connection with people. Because if the server comes out and you're just being a douche to them, you're being high strung with them the entire time, they're not going to be inclined to help you. Yeah. Because the first thought's going to be they're going to they're going to as literal as it is bite the hand that feeds them. Yeah. Right. So they're like, well, if I extend that and I give you a little bit of help, you're you seem like the type of person who's going to use that against me. Yeah. So they're not going to do it. Whereas you've been waiting for an hour, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you know, all this stuff, whatever. And you're just nice about it, like, yeah, no, you're good, you're good, all this stuff, like, you know, I think we can get more drinks here or something then, or like an appetite, like something, right? Yeah. But you're just being nice, kind of working through solutions, you know, giving them the break. When they have that opportunity to help you, they'll be more inclined to. Yeah. I, High strong people don't get that help. Yeah, I should probably clarify here because I was a server and I know that when it does take that long time for the food to come out, it's never the server's fault. Right. Oh, it's of course. Never the server's fault because they are not touching your food until it gets on the plate that they're taking to you. So I'm not saying that I'm, you know, being a douche to the server. Like I'll probably tip the guy and walk out regardless, but whatever the case, I know that the issue isn't on them. So I will back that up by saying never be a douche to your server right. because then it's just going to make the experience even worse. Um, but on top of that, I would also say that it's, you know, just in life when it comes to your car, when it comes to your expectations for whatever it is you're trying to do to lower the expectations, not to be so high strung thinking that everything's going to be perfect and the way you want it to work out all the time lower those expectations to reality you know it is going to turn around and sometimes you do have to buy a new car because yours just blew up because of lack of maintenance that's on you but lower the expectation that the mechanic's not just going to magically fix it and it's like you know you know better sometimes and like in that situation you know better you you know very well for a fact that when you towed that car to my shop there was not a drop of oil in it and then all of a sudden it's like yeah your bill is you know two dollars and some pocket lint and your car runs like brand new it's not how that's gonna work out right i think you guys should implement like whenever people come in for whatever like hey my tires need like i have a nail in my tire can you plug it you just go when's the last time you got an oil changed yeah (laughs) (laughs) that's it just ask that straight up I will tell you though, every time we do work on a car, the very first thing we do, if we if you open the hood on a car, you check have to check oil. the oil. Yeah. You have to. I don't care what you're opening the hood for. You could be opening it up to replace the headlight. You have to check the oil. Yeah, it's like you're checking your bases at that point. Yeah. You're making sure it's not gonna trickle down into this domino effect all because the oil is black. Yeah. Or not Solid. on the stick at all. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, you literally had the hood open, they drove five minutes down the road and the car blew up. Come on. You know, all you had to do was check and uh, make a little upsell for yourself, Ethan. And it helps the customer and it helps you. Yeah, wow, imagine people that. already have a bad rap for mechanics, so don't try to upsell them on anything. Oh, never. Of course <laughs> you not. You just said no. it. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not upselling anything. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> uh, there is a difference there with that between what, between what you need and what you don't. Yeah. Right? So people try upselling on things that they can do quickly. Because then they're trying to make quick money. Whereas the upsell is only based on honesty and like, what do you actually need? I check your oil and there's nothing on there. You need an oil change. You came in for a headlight and I'm selling you an oil change. By the definition of the word, that's an upsell. Yeah. Right. But not in that context of, hey, let me buy you your oil two new headlights. Yeah. yeah. You know, you might as well replace the other because they don't match. They don't match. Yeah. It's, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. People come up with One's crazy, dirty. crazy yeah. things to say all the time. Or they're not leveled, so you need a new headlight, and all they had to do is just move the screws, so then they're at level. Okay. Yeah. There's there's a whole plethora of things that mechanics will tell people, because you don't even have to tell people things that make sense, because people don't know anything about cars. Even though, again, as I stress, it's the second most important purchase you make in your life. Spend a little time with it. Yeah. Get to know it a little bit. You know? I mean, it doesn't hurt. Is the motivation of this episode to, you know, get your oil changed? Maybe. Yeah. Check that sticker. And if you don't have a sticker, you probably need it. And if you can't read the sticker, but it's still up there, you definitely need it. So go get an oil change. 
Well, we are running short on time here now, so I do just want to thank everybody for listening to me vent as well as do my best to share little nuggets of wisdom with you guys about some of the people that I've been dealing with this week and how some of those examples can be used in your favor and some are used against your favor. All in all, it's a learning experience and I just wish you guys the best out there this week. Uh, Keep a level head. Stay motivated. And remember, if you guys are one of those people that have been listening for a long time and you haven't interacted with us, you can go ahead and comment down below in any of our videos. Congratulate Justin on becoming a new father. His baby is very awesome, healthy little man. He's a little savage. If you haven't listened to last Monday's episode, go ahead and check that out. Um, but yeah, remember, comment down below. You can reach out to us on our uh, um social medias facebook and instagram the links are down in the description below all of our episodes come out mondays and wednesdays at 8 a.m est until next time go on and get